So guys, this is back camera from Dreamlight. I want to do a review of Star Winston's new Urban Future 5 prop for Dash Studio. It comes in two versions. One is for the iRay render engine and the other is for the 3 light. I'm, I'm going to take a look at the iRay for this demonstration. You can find it here inside Dash Studio formats. My library, Dash library, okay. Props, Star Winston, Urban Future 5 and iRay. So upon loading, we can see that there is a lot of detail going on, as always with the Storm Mason prop. And I want to first show off the scale of it, so I'm going to simply move out the camera a little bit and show you exactly what the scale is. So I'm going to switch over to Texture Shader Preview so we can see what's going on have a look at this prop and the scale of it. So pretty much the center intersection over here then it goes to the right and goes backwards and it goes forward and if we go beyond this circular opening There is a little bit left here and a little bit right as well. Okay, so size wise, it's like a chunk of urban sprawl, too, right? It's, it's not a super huge prop, it's not a complete city, but it has enough views to vary your, your camera angles. Okay, up here at the top. It's very simplistic. It has very little detail on on the top. So this is not a prop you would, you know, place a camera up here and point it downward or something like that. It's it's mostly designed to have all the details at the bottom. So this is a kind of a city style prop. And down here, a little bit higher up from the ground, that's where all the details start coming up as awesome futuristic billboards. There's a little bit of Chinatown over it with these vents, AC vents, right? And it has a little bit of look of Urban Future 4, But on ground level, that's where the magic happens, and that's where all the details are. We have some incredible details here on the walls. Graffiti style. That's what I love about this prop. It has some amazing, gorgeous you know, street level details. Bar here. And an opening. Arch. awesome all right let me just go back here also I love this area over here it has a little bit of Blade Runner look and feel to it especially with this Japanese style billboard here that is truly looking like Blade Runner, right? So old meets sci-fi. Awesome. So as far as lighting goes, there is no lights provided. There is no camera angles provided. This prop is made of several, you know, items and groups, and each group can be moved or disabled. As always with stop motion props, which I love, it brings additional you know, way of altering this prop. You can select a particular building and rotate it or move it or scale it or whatever you want to do or duplicate it to really make something unique if you want to, but it's, I mean, it's ready to render out of the box, right? So as far as lights goes, as I said, there is no lights included. Besides, a lot of surfaces and these neon signs 
do indeed emit a little bit of lighting. So if you switch to, if you add a camera, and let's go to camera view. zoom out so just a quick camera angle and if you go to render settings click on environment there is not nothing loaded in here so it doesn't load with anything useful for you to use so if you just choose scene only that is pretty much and I'm gonna just turn off the headlamp that is pretty much what you know the render what the scene will give you it's it's a kind of very dark night-ish style render it's just a little bit of vague lighting and the streets let me just let let this initiate just for a second here I'm gonna pause the video so as you can see the streets are reflective so they kind of have you know a little bit of rain effect if you will on them or just a feeling of rain and they just you know provide a little bit of reflection on the ground but it's it's a very dark setting it, it the neon signs and everything it doesn't really punch anything but what you can do instead of going into all the individual settings what you can do is go to render settings and go into tone mapping and choose a film ISO 200 that will double the intensity of all the lights and therefore provide a lot more visual uh, reference for you you can also double that yet again and have even more going on but as you can see there is not anything else going on it's cute awesome looking neon signs but there is no additional lights what you can do is just inside Photoshop you can create a new image let those just do a very low res version and let's create something blue tinted like a night setting all right so uh, let's just test it out as a blue and I'm gonna save this as background and I'm going to save as HDR. You don't have to, you can just use a JPEG, but HDR will just look a little bit different. Um, let's see if I can find it here somewhere. Whoops, I need to switch over to mode 32 bits per pixel and now save it. Alright, let's go in the background. And you go in here and choose HDR. Like I said, if you don't have this latest version of Photoshop, you can just use a JPEG. It will not look the same, but it will give you enough going on. Let me just uh, quit Photoshop. There we go. So what you can do, you can go to the environment and use Dome and Scene and change the map here by browsing to that location we'll simply choose that HDR map we just created that will add a little bit of blue tone backdrop you can if you like to click on draw dom, dome on which will then you know show this blue tinted sky if you want it if you do not want it you can keep it turned off I'm going to show you what to add instead but right now you have this gorgeous blue tinted overall light which you can adjust down a little bit if you want to this will give a little bit more life into the scene a little bit more breathing you know lighting and you can really truly scale it down quite a bit so it's just a vague thing going on so instead of having pitch darkness you will have this gorgeous you know visual style going on which is awesome right so you can now play with these two you can go to for instance tone mapping and increase the ISO to yet again twice the amount which will punch everything including the blue 
back to what is added, so you can scale it down to half of it again. So you counter the increase of ISO. So you can now play with you know the the neons of the scene by increasing the ISO, and you can now lower the environment here with, with this uh, environment map setting. So on top of this, what you can do, you can go to Window Panes and choose Environment, right? In here, you can choose Backdrop and either choose a color. This prop doesn't come with the sky dome, so it doesn't obstruct anything. So you can choose a color of your choice that will maybe or maybe not match your render. But what you, what you can obviously do is add a sky to it. So right now I'm just going to pick any random render or image I'm going to browse. So I'm right now in my runtime textures folder. Let me locate the uh, dream mites. So I'm just going to pick a random background right now. And these backgrounds I'm going to choose, they are really truly 360 degree panoramic images. So they will m possibly, you know, look a little bit squashed or squeezed. But uh, I'm just after adding a little bit of sky behind, right? So I just don't have a naked angle uh, background. Now, this color is on top of the image. If you want to have the exact color it came with, you have to select white. That will then recolor the, the backdrop, okay? And since we have a blue tinted HDR map, Illuminating a little bit of adding of you no know, a little bit of illumination, we can color this blue so it matches that. So you can play with those until it, it truly matches. So this is just an idea of adding a little bit of something in there so it doesn't look you know black. You can also rotate this, right, flip it, rotate left or right or whatever, and also flip horizontally if that maybe suits your render better okay so now what is the polygon count of this amazing looking prop well let's find out so what I'm gonna do is simply export this gorgeous prop and just before doing that let me let me just go and examine it here how does it really look up close Man, this is gorgeous. I just love this stuff. I could just go on forever here. These kind of effects, this, these window effects with the dancing go go girls, I saw something similar in, the, in one of the PS4 games I was playing. The Juice X, the new Juice X game. So this is really cool stuff love it love it oh, I mean it just looks so incredibly gorgeous guys this is I mean this is truly a leap of quality over the previous ones it just looks amazing I love the this is a thing you can you know always use on, on renders is is to give the floor a little bit of reflective surface. I've seen this in, in a lot of movies and also in TV series. One which really, really, you know, it stands out is the series CSI. CSI Miami, I believe. Uh, in Miami, there was a lot of sunshine, right? And yet they have these water flushed, you know, streets to reflect lighting. As a trick that you can use uh, to enhance your renders is to to make the flow ref reflective. It doesn't have to rain exactly now, but you know, kind of post post rain, right? Post rain. Amazing. Okay, so let's export this prop. Urban Future Five, OBJ. Okay, let's select. I'm gonna obviously choose that way I'm gonna write material library and collect maps click on accept I'm gonna export the model 
I mean, Stefan really did an outstanding job on getting this futuristic slash old visual style. I just love this stuff, guys. Looks amazing. Alright, so let's do wireframe so it doesn't render. And let's open it up. Awesome. So, pretty much, uh, it says here 87 non planar polygons found. Doesn't need to mean anything, can be that there are some awkward polygons going on, maybe that are not visible. I often have those as well in, in a prop somewhere. If they are hidden, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let me let me just wait for this to initiate. Okay, perfect. Now, light wave is really, as you can see, it takes a lot of time for it to update its its view. It's not as fast at updating as Dash Studio is, especially with textures on. If you do, you know, hit a line, it's gonna go a little bit faster. But uh, I just prefer Dash Studio for for this this thing. It just goes a lot faster. So let me just wait for it here. I'm gonna just pause. There we go. All right. So I don't I don't have to move this prop around right now. It's it's quite heavy for for light wave. <laughs> uh, let me let me see if I can find some info. The uptude speed is horrible, but I have two applications running, so I, I have no idea what is causing. I'm just going to select all the polygons. And there we go. And it has 880,612 polygons. So it's a quite heavy prop. Probably, if you have a lower end PC with a little bit less memory, it can be a little bit heavy on your on your end, and it might be, you know, it might even crash your system if you, if you have too little too little memory uh, trying to load this. So it's quite heavy polygon wise. Um, let's go back to Dash Studio, and just before leaving, guys, I just want to do a quick test on you know moving the camera a little bit closer so I'm gonna just move it really close here just to see the details on the street level here we really see what's going on here at street level how does it look really really close so because it's a polygon heavy scene it might also take a little to render it's not you know a super light project a city however what you can do once you have loaded it you can obviously remove the parts of the scenery that you don't need right simply select something and right click on it and choose delete that will then delete that from the scenery and free up some memory however if there are reflections going on it might remove them as well because if if the building is reflecting off something on the right side and you remove that building it's not going to reflect it anymore right okay so close up details how does it survive really really close looks amazing as always up close on stormization props there's a lot of details going on and a lot of depth, there is a little bit of lighting going on in, in the interior here, so I love the depth. Alright. I mean, look at this. You can even sense some stuff on the wall. So the details are amazing, as always. So Stefan has, yet again, and now I've removed that prop here, so it's always gone, right? I cannot do that. Um, all right, so guys, that's that's it for this for this prop. If you want to get it, you know, click on the link. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. I hope you get some additional information on whether this is something for you or not. 
and i see you next time.